Hey everybody, it's the Mad Master here. And I've just been thinking about the uh, GameStop thing a lot. And I think it's probably one of the best things for democracy, quote unquote, that's happened since the Berlin Wall came down. And I know that sounds like hyperbole, but, you know, we really have the start of something new here. Um, a lot of people are freaking out over it. And it's like a, a way to reclaim power that has been lost with all these financial institutions and all these corporations and banks and all this stuff and hedge funds. And I really like it, what's going on with that. So, and I know, you know, I was listening to NPR. <laughs> and honestly, there was a woman that was kind of saying, well, this other hedge fund was involved too. So it's, it's not David versus Goliath. It's Goliath versus Goliath, kind of. I mean, yeah, then maybe there's some nuance like that. But, you know, what does it symbolize? You know, it symbolizes an establishment that has been fucking people over for at least 45 years. Now, I don't know, you know, the rise of modern neoliberalism and neoliberal economics. One thing that I don't, one thing, one gap in my learning that's, there is that I'm not certain about the reasoning behind switching to that model exactly. I know it has something to do with the 70s and you know hyperinflation, you know, Keynesianism was seen as causing all this stuff, which to be fair, maybe Keynesianism with all this other stuff that was going on, like the Vietnam War. The oil stuff that was, you know, the politics, geopolitics with the oil stuff that was going on in the in the 70s. So they they the politicians, the powers of beast saw that neoliberalism was, you know, a way forward out of all that. But how much of that is greed and just wanting to take back the power from the people, or how much of it is an actual like proposed alternative to what was going on? That's where my confusion comes in. I'm going to be doing more research on that. But that said, you know, a lot of power has gotten out of the hands of the people. And it's gone into these power structures and entities. And people's lifestyles, you know, people people's uh, standard of living is higher than it was. You know, millennia past and years past. But still, there's, there's an unfairness. There is an inequality that, with what's going on. But the hypocrisy is what's really appalling about a lot of these people, you know. Now they're talking about more regulations and even Elizabeth Warren, um, who ostensibly, I believe, is a establishment shill. I think Bernie is an establishment shill now, but I still believe that he, at least on some level, believes in his own hype still. He believes in what he's doing. I don't think he's, I think he's more of a useful idiot. People may disagree, but um, I think he does like, uh, he does the bidding of the, of the masters now. So, but I don't think it's greed that's motivating him or, you know, hubris. I think it's more just how things are structured and how he does his thing, which was never, fiery enough to go against the establishment in a way that was, you know, long-term had any potential. So, but Elizabeth Warren, definitely not your friend. Um, I followed her candidacy and people liked her and people told me that she was, oh, she's like, just like Bernie, but she's better than just this and this and this. It's like, you don't get it. You know, they put, I mean, I truly do believe they put her, they propped her up because they wanted Bernie to fail. I mean, that's that's really what happened in 2020 or 2019. So, anyways, on that note, uh, yeah, she's proposing these things. She's looking at things the wrong way. Um, these these financial institutions, I I'd say let's fucking just like, I mean, I don't want people's 401ks to uh, be affected by any of this stuff and all this stuff, but. At the same time, you go, you know, in order to in order to make an omelet, you gotta crack a few eggs. <laughs> and I don't, and I know that's some of that scaremongering too, by the way, by the media. So, really, at the end of the day, 
I definitely want to just, you know, I want to see normal people get rich and not become what they, you know, what they were fighting against, of course, too. But it, it's awesome to see this display of defiance towards these entities that people are having. And you, it unites people across the board. I was talking to people that are, you know, more establishment Democrats that support it. I, you know, there's even Trump supporters that support it. You know, a few Trump supporters that I watch on YouTube totally love it, you know. But, you know, he always had that part of his demographic was anti-establishment all along. Regardless, regardless of what the mainstream media says, it's a, it is the truth. Um, and that's part of the thing with uh, with this whole thing is that it's just... It's the people taking back power that they've lost for a generation, you know. You used to be able to get a job in the United States and, like, be guaranteed you don't have to work three jobs to, you know, make rent or make a meal, you know, make meals or whatever. But now it's a lot harder to do that. And when these people, and especially this lockdown shit and, you know, this like, the pandemic stuff. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so I think that it's a beautiful thing. I want it to continue and I want to see these people flounder, these fucking elites just like freak out. I don't want them to go too crazy because I don't want them to fuck, you know, like fuck over people with new laws and new regulations and new, uh, surveillance. But it's funny. It's funny watching people blame Russia for it, like Jimmy Kimmel or fucking, like, come on, give me a fucking break. Well, could it be foreign actors including Russia? Like I said, what is with the Russia shit? I don't get it. I don't, nobody has ever explained to me why we became, all of a sudden, we're friends with Russia and now we're not. It's like, nobody ever clarifies that shit. Why? I mean, and if you tell me the reason why, I will probably break it down and say, well, that's something I want to be destroyed anyways. I don't want America to be enemies with Russia because of we're vying for some resources in the uh, Middle East or something or, or in the Caspian region or whatever. That's the problem is the corruption because of that. That's, that's the problem. The Russia thing is a symptom of that problem. So that we're imperialist fucking corporatist warmongers. So anytime someone brings up Russia, it's like, I don't care, you know, for one. And obviously this is just fucking a uh, bullshit propaganda against the people on Reddit that were trying to, uh, you know, get themselves rich during an a unprecedented economic time. You know, that's probably, this is probably worse, this is probably worse, worse uh, period since the Great Depression. So, I love it. Um, smash the motherfuckers down. You know, I, I say I welcome it. I welcome it. I welcome, welcome the, uh, I want to see him embarrassed. See, I, I think we, we got to return to, uh, we got to get something like WikiLeaks going again, too. And we got to, like, expose these people, like. Some of these financial and political elites, you know, need to be exposed. I mean, get get pictures all over the fucking internet, you know. Just like the Hunter Biden thing with the uh, New York, where was it, uh, New York Post. Let's get, like, pictures like that of all these politicians smoking crack and committing all sorts of crimes and all these, like, financial elites and stuff and just embarrass the fuck out of them. You know, like, that, that guy at CNBC that was talking about... Um, all these people getting money from the government, buying buying the GameStop stock. I would love to see a picture of him, like, really humiliated by some dominatrix and, like, a fucking, you know, him, like, bound and gagged by some dominatrix. Like, if there's someone that has a picture of that, I'd love to see that kind of shit. These people are fucking, you know, it needs to be... See, I don't, I don't believe in... I don't think violence is the answer. Because it's temporary. And... When people use violence in political in a political means as a political means to an end, it, it corrupts it. In de, you know, in def, I mean, indefinitely. We saw that with the Russian Revolution. We saw, you know, we see that with every violent revolution. Usually, even the American Revolution to some extent. I mean, yeah, it was it was violent, 
and it was you know we were we were formed on violence it was less corrupt you know in certain ways though so what is going on with this oh my god what is going on with this okay so that's about all peace out